What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Let's Machine, back here again for Practical Machinist. Before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe below if you want to see more videos. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today we're going to be talking about CNC versus manual machining. Now, when we talk about CNC versus manual machining today, I just want to go out and flat out say it, this is not a competition. It's not talking about which is better or which is more important in today's society, nothing like that. I know there's always a constant debate with that. But instead we're gonna be talking about the importance of knowing manual machining and knowing CNC and knowing when to use each. So first and foremost, I personally feel, and this is just personal opinion, that everybody should start with manual machining. The reason for that is this, and I'll kind of start that with a bit of a story. By the time I went to apprenticeship school, so in Ontario, the way you go to school is, unless you go and just enroll at a, at a private trade college or something of the like, is you get a job, so you get an apprenticeship at a shop, and then you're working there, and then you get put usually on block release, so you go for eight weeks or 10 weeks or whatever it is, during the work year for your schooling. And the first year I went to school, I was a little bit disappointed at the time that we basically only did manual stuff. You know, we learned how to use a file. We learned how to drill. We learned how to tap. And, you know, at that point, I had been doing CNC for a few years. I had been an operator for a while. Uh, and I had done manual stuff at my shop. And I was confused and kind of disappointed because I thought to myself, what is the point of doing this? Because I'd already done it before. And as I've kind of gone on and gotten into hiring people myself and seeing the kind of different backgrounds people come from. Manual machining is really important to start with, in my opinion, because it teaches you a lot of the whys as to why you do things in CNC. And for an example, if you don't, if you've never done, if you've never drilled a hole on a manual machine and you understand why you need a spot drill first, if you've never tried to just drill a hole without using a pilot or without um, spot drilling and getting a good you know, chamfer in there first and watching that drill kick off, you may not understand really why you need to do certain things. And when that happens, you may not be able to understand and troubleshoot problems when they happen in the machine. Is the spot not deep enough? Is the spot too deep? That can be a problem too. Um, is the drill wandering because I didn't put a pilot in it? You know, these are all things that I think are really helpful to learn on a manual mill because it helps kind of take some of the mystery out of it. When you're running a machine with the doors closed, a CNC machine with the doors closed, there's coolant flying, there's chips flying. Sometimes there's a little bit of disconnect I find with what's really going on inside the machine. So doing things on a manual machine first can really help you understand why you need to do certain things and the proper order that things should go in. Uh, another big one is being able to do things by feel. If you've never had to drill a hole and sit there and literally pull that handle and feel, because you can feel it in the spindle, you can feel whether, you're, whether your chips are getting built up inside. You can feel whether your speeds and feeds, well, I guess your feed is whatever you're doing, but whether you're trying to feed it too hard, you'll be able to tell. Um, if your speeds are bad and you can feel it wandering, or you know if you're milling and your speeds are bad and you feel it really having to chug through it, you get a lot more of a feel for if you're using the right tool, how you should be using that tool, um, things like depth of cut. And obviously all these things don't translate directly to CNC because CNCs can do things that we can't on a manual mill, as easily I should say. But being able to do things by feel that way, really I, help, I think helps make you a more intuitive machinist when it comes over to CNC. Um, another big thing is learning things like climb milling versus conventional milling. If you've ever tried to climb mill on a traditional bridge port without a backlash eliminator, eliminator, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's gonna try to pull it across, um, your finish is gonna be garbage. You know, you do everything in conventional. Whereas on CNC, you really wanna do everything in climb as a general rule to get the best finishes. Obviously there's a million exceptions to that, whether you want the pressure going up or down. But even learning whether the pressure goes up or down, whether you're climb milling, or conventional milling is something that I learned from manual machining. It was having to get parts starting to get pulled out of the vise and you know, going to my supervisors and saying, hey, listen, I don't understand why this is happening. To learn, you know, oh, so force is applied in different directions off the spindle when you do that. And you know what, some of you guys, I'm sure have started with CNC and never had to do this and are great at it. And that's fantastic. Um, 
I'm not saying it's mandatory. I'm not saying that you can't learn everything you need to learn by starting on a CNC. I just think that starting on a manual mill can really help build your skills at a more intuitive level than just hopping straight into programming and setting up a vise and setting off tool heights. So it's something to think about. The other reason why manual is essential to know if you're in a production shop like mine or a job shop is sometimes you just need to put a couple holes in something. Sometimes all the machines are full and you need to mill something off and it needs to be accurate and it needs to have a good finish and it's not just doing, you know, just cut this off work, you know, plus minus a 16th. Sometimes you still need to do a very important operation, but you can't do it in a CNC for whatever reason. So knowing how to use a manual lathe, knowing how to cut bushings, knowing how to, you know, use a reamer on a manual mill are all very, very important things because at some point you're probably gonna need to be able to do it and not having to wait for a CNC machine can really help you with your workflow that way. Now moving over to the CNC end of things, um, I find it to be an interesting debate online all the time um, between you know manual guys saying that CNC guys aren't real machinists or you know they don't know what they're doing and the CNC guys like to go to the manual guys and say oh you're outdated and there's no work for it anymore and the fact is there are a lot of people that make really good money and very comfortable living some have very productive shops just doing manual work are there as many of them today as there were 20 years ago no will there be less in five years yes one of the main reasons to learn CNC, if you are a manual guy, is recession proofing and technology proofing your work. There will always be work for strictly manual machinists. Some of you guys are artists. Um, you know, you guys do things that people who do CNC may struggle with. But at some point, that industry is going to keep contracting and it's been contracting since CNC was introduced. You know, the thought of, People having CNC machines in their garage 20 years ago or 30 years ago was laughable. They were only for big, big shops. Now you can buy a desktop CNC in your bedroom if you really wanted to. So the access to that technology and the integration of that technology is so ingrained in the trade now that if you have zero experience with CNC, zero de desire to learn CNC, essentially all you're doing is pigeonholing yourself. And you know, it's, you may be really good at it, but at some point that industry is going to keep contracting and you're gonna be fighting for that job. And you're not gonna have the option to turn around and say, hey, at 45 years old, I now wanna learn CNC and compete for a job against some guy who's been doing it since he was 20. You know, it, you can learn at any time. And I think that even if you are 45 or if you're 50, if you wanna be in the trade, I think it is essential that you learn some CNC in the basics so that, hey, what if your shop has to close tomorrow and you get laid off? You can at least go somewhere else and say, I have a foundation here and I can build on it, not, hey, I need to start from scratch and I'm not too sure what to do that way. Just makes you more hireable. Um, you know, the name of the game in this industry is flexibility and more ways you can make yourself flexible and the more capabilities you can have under your belt, the bigger an asset you're gonna be to whatever company hires you, the more money you can command and of course, the more easily you can find a job. Long story short guys, I think that there is a very, very important place for manual machining and CNC machining in every machinist tool belt. Um, like I said, if you don't know manual stuff and you are strictly a CNC guy, I highly recommend you at least try to get yourself into a maker space or you know, work with your manual tools on your spare time to try to get a little better at them because it's a skill you need to have. And manual guys, if you are strictly manual still, I really recommend doing your best to try to get some CNC knowledge even if it's just taking an online course or grabbing some you know, free CAD CAM system off the internet and playing around with it. So at least you familiarize yourself with it, okay? In the comments, guys, I want you to tell me what you think is important about CNC machining and manual machining and how they relate. I don't want to debate on what's more important. I want to know what makes it important for people to have both experiences because I just kind of ran through a lot of this here and I know I glossed over a lot, so I'm sure you guys have some good information there. So make sure you comment that in the, in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos. We'll talk soon. You have a great day. Take care.